Hello guys and welcome back. In this video I'm going to talk about the pulmonary systemic flow ratio, better known as the QPQS. Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to like this video. So let's start. Before start talking about the QPQS, we have to know first what is an intracardiac shunt. Intracardiac shunts are abnormal pathways for blood flow in the heart that form either in addition to or in place of normal pathways for blood flow. They are the most common congenital heart defects. Approximately 0.8% to 1.2% of live births worldwide have some type of congenital heart anomaly. Management of a shunt depends on the disease type and ranges from simple clinical observation, medical therapy, lifestyle modification to surgical intervention. The two big categories of intracardiac shunts are cyanotic and acyanotic. Cyanotic shunts impair oxygenation of blood by the pulmonary system and result in cyanosis. Acyanotic shunts do not impair blood flow to the lungs and the process of oxygenation is intact. Following are different types of acyanotic and cyanotic shunts. In the acyanotic shunts we have atrial septal defect, ventricular septal defect, and patent ductal arteriosus. And for the cyanotic shunts we have tetralogy of fallot, truncus arteriosus, total anomalous pulmonary venous return, pulmonary atresia with ventricular septal defect, tricuspid atresia, hypoplastic left heart syndrome, transposition of great arteries and double outlet right ventricle. So what is the pulmonary systemic flow ratio? The difference in pulmonary QP and systemic blood flow QS is one of the variables used to estimate the size of intracardiac shunts as a determination of clinical significance and indication for surgical correction. The methods used to determine the QPQS ratio are usually highly invasive and require general anesthesia. In the cat lab, it is possible to retrieve blood gases from arterial and mixed venous blood and use the oximetric shunt formula to calculate a QPQS ratio. There are non-invasive methods to diagnose intracardiac shunts available but they are imprecise and have clinical limitations. Echocardiography has become the method of choice to detect the presence of intracardiac shunts. The QPQS ratio can be a very useful calculation to help determine how significant a left to right intracardiac shunt is. But what is QPQS and how do you calculate it? QPQS. The Q in the QPQS ratio stands for blood flow, the P stands for pulmonary and the S stands for systemic. So when we use the term QPQS, what we are saying it is the ratio of pulmonary blood flow to systemic blood flow. QPQS is the pulmonary systemic shunt ratio. 
in normal circumstances and in the absence of either moderate plus pulmonary or aortic valve regurgitation, stroke volume through the RVOT should be identical to the stroke volume through the LVOT. If there is a significant shunt in the circulation, this will result in flow to the pulmonary circulation being different to the flow to the systemic circulation. In other words, the QP-QS ratio is used to determine the ratio of the pulmonary to systemic blood flow across an intracardiac shunt, such as a PFO, ASD or VSD. So, how to calculate the QPQS? The QPQS ratio can be assessed by echocardiography. It is the principal way of quantifying the degree of a shunt across a defect. It also provides precise indications as to whether and when the defect should be closed. This ratio requires meticulous care in the measurements, particularly of both outflow tracts diameter since they are square to obtain relevant cross-sectional area. It will quantify a hemodynamically significant shunt, but it is too crude to use to rule out the presence of a shunt. A pathological shunt may be present, but so small as to have no significant measurable impact on flow volumes. It may also be a transient phenomenon requiring coughing or valsalva maneuver to bring out. So, what do we need to calculate the QPQS? QPQS can be estimated by using 2D echo and spectral Doppler measurements. You only need four things to obtain the QPQS ratio. First, the LVOT diameter. Second, the LVOT VTI. Third, the RVOT diameter. And fourth, the RVOT VTI. To calculate the QPQS ratio, I'm going to show you step by step how to obtain the measurements you need. Number one, obtain the LVOT diameter. You need this measurement to obtain the cross sectional area of the LVOT. From the parasternal long axis view, Measure the LVOT diameter in early to mid systole, from inner edge to inner edge. The LVOT diameter should be measured at the point of insertion of the aortic cusps, using an inner edge to inner edge methodology from the parasternal long axis window, not the apical windows. In these two pictures, you can see how to properly measure the LVOT diameter. However, if you want more information about how to measure the LVOT diameter properly, I have a full video of this in my YouTube channel, so I will leave the link in the description section. Number two obtain the LVOT VTI. Next, you need to obtain the VTI of the left ventricular outflow tract. Place your pulse wave sample volume at the level of the LVOT to obtain this measurement. A closing valve click should be included in the pulse wave Doppler tracing. This is how you know you are in the right place. The pulse wave trace should be obtained from an apical three chamber or five chamber view. 
Number three, obtain the RVOT diameter. This is to obtain a cross-sectional area of the RVOT. Measure the RVOT diameter during early to mid-ventricular systole. Should be measured from inner edge to inner edge at the base of the pulmonary valve leaflet. Be sure to use the best optimized 2D image you can obtain. In these pictures, you can see how to properly measure the RVOT diameter. We need to obtain this measurement in order to get a cross-sectional area of the RVOT. And number four is to obtain the RVOT VTI. Next, Using your well-optimized image, you need to obtain the VTI of the right ventricular outflow tract. Place your pulse wave sample volume at the level of the RVOT to obtain this measurement. The RVOT flow is generally preferred to that obtained or or distal to the pulmonary valve, since large left to right shunts often result in significant flow disturbance at the pulmonary artery. The pulse wave flow should be clean with a narrow spectrum. In this image, you can see how I'm measuring the RVOT VTI. Let me know in the comments if you would like a full video on how to measure and obtain the RVOT VTI. Now I'm going to show you all the formulas involved in the calculation of the QPQS ratio. You only need to measure the LVOT diameter, but with this diameter, the machine will calculate automatically the cross-sectional area. Here do you have the formula the machine follows to calculate the cross-sectional area of the LVOT. The second measurement you need to add is the VTI of the LVOT. The purpose of this measurement plus the cross-sectional area of the LVOT is to get the stroke volume. If you want to know, this is the formula involved in the calculation of the LVOT stroke volume. The same happens with the pulmonary flow you only have to measure the RVOT diameter. But with this diameter, the machine will calculate automatically the cross-sectional area. Here you can see the formula the machine follows to calculate the cross-sectional area of the RVOT. And once again, just by measuring the VTI of the RVOT, the machine will grab this value and the cross-sectional area to calculate the stroke volume. Here you can see the formula to obtain the right ventricular outflow track stroke volume. You can calculate the QPQS. Now that you have completed the previous steps, you have all the information you need to calculate the QPQS ratio. Here you can see the QPQS ratio formula. Here you can see the QPQS formulas in more detail. I already have on my channel a video on how to obtain the stroke volumes. I will leave the link in the description. Now we are ready to quantify the QPQS. QPQS describes the magnitude of a cardiovascular shunt. 
Remember that QP refers to the pulmonary flow and QS refers to the systemic flow. Now, how do we quantify the QPQS? A normal QPQS is one to one. This means that the same amount of blood flow that is going to the pulmonary system is going to the systemic system. For left to right shunts, normally the QPQS is more than one, as the pulmonary flow exceeds the systemic flow. For right to left shunts, normally the QPQS is less than one, as the systemic flow exceeds the pulmonary flow. Bidirectional shunting may result in the ratio normalizing even though shunting is present. And a hemodynamically significant ASD, BSD, or PDA may have a QPQS around 1.5. Other findings may include left ventricular and left atrial dilatation and raised right ventricular pressures. You can follow this table in order to quantify intracardiac shunts. With a QPQS less than one, you have a right to left shunt. With a QPQS between 1 and 1.5, you have a small left to right shunt. With a QPQS from 1.5 to 2, you have a moderate left to right shunt. And if you have a QPQS more than 2, probably you have a large left to right shunt. Some tips for calculating a good QPQS. Always make sure you have a good quality images. The information you obtain is only as good as the quality of the images you can get. If you're guessing, don't try to report it. And always use a good Doppler angle when obtaining VTIs for QPQS. Again, if you are unable to obtain a good Doppler signal at a good angle, don't try to report the data. Simply report it as suboptimal image quality. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to like this video. Also share it with some colleagues if you think it will be useful. Thank you again and thank you for all your support. Bye!